energy forecast for Sunday, August 18th. So we have the moon in Aquarius energy all day. And of course, we're building towards the full moon in Aquarius that will be taking place here on the 19th. We are in a very intensified times, especially where the energies are concerned, dating back since Wednesday when we had that Mars and Jupiter conjunction sent a ripple effect out into the cosmos, out into the universe. Yes, we're still on the fence about things. Yes, there's a tug of war between our heart and our head. We're still trying to figure out where it is that we're going from here. We're still trying to put into perspective some past situations, some past circumstances. But of course, the intensity, the triggers, the activations have to happen in order for the aha moments, the light bulbs to actually pop off under the full moon in Aquarius. Today, we have 11 different aspects taking place. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. And with the moon in Aquarius, we're able to kind of emotionally detach, to act as the observer, to see ourselves from a different lens, to look at our lives from a different perspectives. We're definitely having some pop-offs, but for the most part, until we build to that peak potency of the full moon, there's likely going to be some confusion, some, let's call it reprocessing that just doesn't make sense to us as we kind of explore again past events and how they're relating to the path, the direction that we want to be taking moving forward into the future. So we're definitely in the full moon window. May I also just say we're still under the influence of this Mars Jupiter conjunction and the full moon also has the Saturn Jupiter square that we have been kind of waiting for as well. And this is definitely not as pleasant. A square, of course, highlights the growing pains, the tension, the conflict that we're experiencing while going through those growing pains. But the epiphanies, the pop-offs, the triggers, the activations that are going to help us see things from a different set of eyes and therefore gain a lot more clarity isn't going to happen until the 19th with that full moon pop-off, with that square really highlighting where it is that the past is now being released in order for us to move on, follow a new path, follow a new direction. So the moon in Aquarius is going to make an awkward interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, who happens to be in the Gemini energy. Again, half of the reason of why we're a little bit confused on where it is that our time, our energy, our attention is needed the most. The moon interacting with Mars in this way is definitely putting us in the headspace. Again, the Aquarian energy and the Gemini energy all up in the intellect. We are very torn. We are very divided. We are trying to pressurize ourselves to see our situation and circumstances from a different lens. However, this is likely going to ruffle some feathers, put us in an anxious disposition. The restlessness is definitely going to kick off. We are going to feel those ants in our pants. Of course, Mars wants to take action and make moves. And in Gemini energy, all we're doing is planning and strategizing about the moves that we eventually want to make. And we're very undecided in this Gemini energy, thus creating the tension, the conflict, the restlessness, the agitation that, of course, does not make us feel so good. We have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, retrograde in the heart and soul of the Zodiac in this Leo energy, getting into the boxing ring, squaring off with Uranus. So Uranus is the great awakener who is in Taurus energy, and Uranus is the highest form of our intellect, while Mercury rules over the lower level of our intellect. Basically, the Iranian energy connects us with the higher realms of intelligence, the higher self, if you will. We're able to gain perspective, gain clarity, gain intuitive insight through the Iranian energy. We bring it down to the lower level intellect that Mercury rules over, where we add logic and practicality to it, where we kind of sort things out. We process it from a, let's call it, particular standpoint of our ego selves. Now, a square doesn't feel good. Again, it's a growing pain. And so having the highest form of our intellect and the lowest form of our intellect be at each other in this way isn't going to feel good. There's going to be a lot of tension in our headspace. This is going to mean that our 
thoughts are scattered. We can't really concentrate on one thing. Our communication style is probably going to be impacted because we can't seem to get the words out in the way that we wish that we could. It is going to feel very Mercury retrograde-ish. And because there is this Uranian energy, it does kind of lend a little bit more anxiety to the situation, a little bit more confusion to the situation than there actually needs to be. The moon in Aquarius is then going to sextile beautiful interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. And that North Node is trying to get us on the right path to be a little bit more independent, to go after what it is that we need to do, what we have to build, what we have to create for ourselves. Now, a sextile means that we are definitely starting to see some steps to move forward. We're definitely having some, let's call it a little bit of glimmer, a little bit of light bulb moments to pop off to put us in a different mood, a different attitude to see where the potential for moving forward actually is. There are some insights, there are some potentials right now that are kind of dangling a carrot in front of our face. Yeah, we're still undecided about it. Yes, we're a little bit confused about it. However, we are starting to see actual steps being offered, being available to us now to move on, to grow, to heal, to fix, to repair, to actually break away from a lot of the funk that we've been sitting in for a very long time. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. Venus, of course, is in Virgo energy right now, really trying to kind of process who and what needs to stay needs to go really focusing in on what we could do better, where it is that we could take better care of ourselves, where it is that the energy exchanges in particular relationship dynamics aren't where they need to be. And basically we are getting in our heart space to figure out what we need to fix, what we need to heal, what we need to resolve in order to create a better day-to-day -day life, especially where our routines, our relationship dynamics and our money matters are concerned. So this is a positive interaction. It definitely means that we are thinking more futuristically on where it is that we want to end up. We're able to grasp that greater, grander vision and break it down into more smaller, manageable pieces, right? So when you have a vision or a goal or a target or a dream or a vision, that's great, but it's the finer details that actually make that greater, grander vision exist. So Venus is really kind of aligning in our heart space with a new set of priorities, a new set of values, a new set of wants, needs, and desires of what we can do in the present moment, in the here and now, to actually start gaining a little bit of momentum towards this futuristic goal, dream, and vision. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer, who is retrograde in Aries energy. This Chiron energy is helping us to heal, helping us to grow, especially where seeing ourselves, the positive parts anyways, is concerned. We have just busted out this new version of self that we again are testing the boundaries within. This is a positive interaction between the moon and Chiron, which means that we're acting as the observer. We're seeing ourselves from a third party position. We're starting to see how strong we are. We're starting to see how graceful we are going through these growing pains. We're starting to see how much we've been able to accomplish, how much we've been able to change in a positive way. We're really building ourselves up and we're feeling pretty good about where it is that we're currently at. Mars, the god of war, is then going to be interacting with this north node in Aries energy. Mars rules over the Aries energy that the north node is in, so there's a little bit of an intensity here. We are definitely starting to see where we're feeling motivated, inspired, excited even, for futuristic possibilities, the things that could happen the things that we could do, that we could pursue. There's some sort of excitement there. There's some sort of new inspiration there. There's some sort of new potential. And it feels really good for us to be hopeful and wishful and orient to wanting to bring this particular potential into form. The moon is going to semi-square Neptune though, and this is definitely going to be a little bit of a confusion aspect, a confusion element. 
Again, the moon in Aquarius energy acting as the observer to see where it is that we're feeling trapped, where it is that we're feeling held back, especially emotionally speaking. Neptune, of course, is retrograde in his placement of power in this Pisces energy that has us all kind of focused on what we have to wrap up, what we have to close the door on, what we have to fix and resolve, especially where emotions and karma have definitely taken center stage. Now this is a semi-square, so there's a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict, and right now we're just overwhelmed. Just when we get excited about potential, just when we get a little bit inspired, a little bit motivated, a little bit determined to actually choose a path, choose a direction, what happens? We start speaking fears, doubts, insecurities into something that we were feeling pretty good about. Now, this is definitely going to put us in a situation where we're overthinking things, where we're not feeling so confident about ourselves. Again, we kind of lean more into all that could go wrong instead of focusing on all that could go right. It is a temporary blip of confusion, of uncertainty, but... Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, is coming up to bumping into teaming up with the sun. So, of course, this is a Kazemi or a Kazemi, if that's the way you want to pronounce it. Regardless, it's an inferior conjunction, which means that the sun and Mercury are so close together that our thoughts are not as clear as we need them to be as we want them to be, let's say, but we're gaining a little bit of clarity, we're gaining a little bit of insight that is helping that confusion kind of dissipate. Basically, this is the halfway mark of Mercury's retrograde. Yep, that's right, we're only halfway through it. When we have a conjunction, it is just as much an ending as it is a beginning. Because Mercury is retrograde, again, there's a lot of reflection, a lot of review, a lot of replaying, a lot of relooping, a lot of the conversations, a lot of the situations and circumstances that, of course, have popped off as of recent that we're trying to make sense of. So here's the thing. The ending is that we are kind of diminishing the confusion mostly because we're coming to a certain term of acceptance that, guess what, we may not fully understand things the way that we wish that we could. However, we're seeing the past from a different set of eyes. We're seeing it as a teacher. We're seeing it as the karmic, let's call it life lesson giver needed in order to launch us into a new path, into a new direction. And of course, the way that we reframe certain situations, certain circumstances has a major impact, not only on this present moment, but on our future possibilities as well. It's almost like we're able to process events from the different perspective, from a new perspective, from a different kind of lens, from a more positive lens. And that in itself carries a sense of relief. It carries a sense of us being able to let go of some of those heavier emotions that we have been experiencing being trapped in our physical form, trapped in our heart space. Again, Mercury being in this Leo energy, it is the review of the matters of the heart. At the same time, the sun shining a bright light in the Leo energy is where it is that we are, again, settling into the heart space, but now understanding what it is that we could do differently. This is how the past essentially impacts our future. So the moon goes ahead, makes a very tough interaction with Venus. So this is an interesting dynamic because, of course, we're gaining this insight. We're seeing old relationship situations and circumstances from a new set of eyes. It does have a ripple effect on the emotions that we are going to carry into our future and I'm going to say present self. Um, but now, emotionally speaking, there's like a little bit of negativity that leaks in. Especially because Venus being in this Virgo energy, we have to focus on the problem in order to fix it. We are seeing ourselves, our relationship dynamics, our karmic chapters from a different set of eyes, from a different lens. That aha moment is going to take a little bit of time to actually settle in. That light bulb kind of, you know, popping off is going to require us to adjust our eyes just a tad. But the Virgo energy that Venus is in is highly critical, highly judgmental. We have to break it down. We have to understand where it is that we came from, how it is that we ended up here, what has changed for us. Again, it kind of throws us back into the past, the heart of the matter, the relationship dysfunction, 
our old wants, needs, and desires versus the ones that we have now. We have to unpack the pain and trauma. We have to unpack the dysfunction in order to actually release it. We're not going to sit in that energy for very long because the moon in Aquarius is going to trine beautiful interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, and wisdom. And he's in Gemini energy. So we get the trine because Aquarius energy and Gemini energy, they're both air signs. So this is an intellectual thing. This is a perspective thing. This is like a sense of knowing that something has shifted in our perspective, in our understanding, which of course is going to have a major impact on our emotions, which of course is going to have a major impact on the choices, on the decisions that we currently have to move on, to move forward. It's almost as if the light bulb is is blinking at this point and we are starting to understand that we have new sense of information, we have a new sense of understanding of perspective and that kind of helps us lean into one path, one decision, one choice point over the other. Again, Jupiter brings optimism, he brings confidence. The Aquarius energy has us futuristically focused at this point. We're really gaining a lot of wisdom. I know it was a tough love life lesson that we all just went through. I know it still hurts. I know it still stings. But to a certain degree, the epiphanies, the aha moment, seeing it from a different set of eyes, from a different lens, is lessening the karmic weight that we are carrying, thus opening us up to a better mood, a better attitude. We're plucking out the silver linings. We're focused on all the good that took place instead of all the bad. And that is helping us to reform and reshape our options, our opportunities to move on, to move forward. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Aquarius making a positive interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. Again, Saturn is their traditional ruler over this Aquarius energy, so there is a little bit of an intensity here. And Saturn is showing us what we're learning, what we are, again, tough love life lesson through those particular lessons, what we're learning and how we can build ourselves up better, how we can build a better belief system, how we can build a better vision, how we can build better boundaries. That's a key word kicker here. Boundaries. Why? Well, because we lacked boundaries. That's what got us in that messy, dysfunctional, power exchanging relationship dynamic that we're so fixated on. We're learning from that. We're plucking out the silver linings. We see it as a tough love life lesson that is going to help build us up into a better, stronger version of self. But of course, in order to do that, you have to have strong boundaries. You have to set the parameters down of what you are and are not willing to tolerate moving forward. And this, although is a boss up energy, it doesn't feel pressurized. It doesn't feel like a challenge. It feels like we are actually rising to the challenge to never find ourselves in similar situations ever again. Mm -hmm.